things. Join the club. Marathon man found her. Almost tripped over, he said. Better keep the vultures away from him. Didn't take them long. Got the message. There's no sign of Alex. He's uh he's on his way, I just passed him at the turn off. The stab wounds are pretty haphazard. Corroded artery was the clincher by the looks. Yeah. Suffocated before she bled out. Courtesy of her undy stuff halfway down her throat. <laughs> What is that? Oh, for God's sake. Do you think the stick was inserted before or after she died? Either way, this is one sick puppy. Line dancing required. Yeah, the first line. In the meantime, nobody's to contaminate the scene. I suppose we should uh, cover the road leading down here and the ground by the drop off, too. Yeah, you might need some more people. Oh, St David's is sending in some more uniforms. Maybe you're getting bolshy, are they? Well, they don't need to know the creepy details. It could create a panic. She wants to talk to the detective in charge. That'd be you. Thanks very much. Oh, you might want to get on to Amy. See if she's had any luck chasing down similar MOs. This stick thing might be a signature. Tap. Camera shot. Here's homicide. She's good. Well, that's all I can tell you at the moment. Was this a sexual assault, Detective Henderson? Uh, that's not something I can discuss at this point. We'll need a post-mortem to determine the physical details. So what can you tell us? Well, not a great deal at this stage, I'm afraid. We have a young woman. Looks to be in her early to mid-twenties. Deceased, clearly in violent circumstances. How was she killed? I can't discuss that. We do know what happened sometime during the night. We'd be grateful if anyone who did see anything... Oh, you come up well. Let's just hope this Thank flushes you. out some new information. Any ideas as to motive? Well, the stick's a pretty clear indication that it's a sexual assault. Any similars on link? No exact matches. Couple of vaginal violations. Hang on, what? This wasn't vaginal? Different orifice. Right. Anything else at the scene? Uh, all we came up with was some tyre prints. It might be useful. Anything on the body? Yeah, well, they reckon she was killed on the spot. She wasn't dumped. No ID? Result so far, but they're extending the search. Public's the best bet for identification. I gave out the Crime Stoppers number. Oh, great. Our phones will be running hot with cranks and nut cases. Yes, and you'll note down every one and refer them back for analysis, clear? See? Now, Thomas Police. No, we don't hand out rewards that kind of information. Yeah, yeah, well, we call it community spirit, OK? Might have a hot one here. 24, description fits. Janelle Watts. Janelle? Do you know her? Her dad's still on the line. Do you want to...? No, no, no. You handle it. Uh, Mr Watts? Yeah. Can I get the information on Janelle's car? OK. Blue Barina. And do you have the registration handy? No, come with police. OK. Yes, Thanks. we are. I'll be right over. OK, bye. Uh, in the meantime, could you put out a Kaloff on a Blue Barina SBN 308? There's 20 metres and there's a break in the scrub, you're right. Push on down and there's a creek. Copy 490, Mount Thomas 509, code 4 to Casia Way. 
do you reckon? Got six Ks from the murder scene. About that. Did you radio crime scene? This will be secondary. Yeah, we gave them the heads up. They're on their way. Phew. The blood on the driver's seat. Probably from his clothes when he was driving away. Assuming a male offender. Driver's license. Do you know what? Hmm. How did you know? Her uh, family went to St. Stevo's. She was quite a bit younger than my girls. I didn't know her all that well, but they, they used to play together after mass. A lot of blood in the car? Well, the carotid artery pumps at a fair pressure. They'd have been covered in blood. So the killer rapes and murders her, then drives away from the scene in her car, or deliberately ditches it at the creek so he can wash himself. He must know the area, then. That creek's not visible from the road. Mm. We're looking at a local. How's her father? He's taking it hard. He's gone down to Melbourne to confirm the ID. I got a preliminary list of friends and work colleagues. And? And Janelle had a date last night. Her boyfriend's named Stephen Pryor. Uh, here he is. What's all this about? Stephen, Senior Detective Henderson. This is Senior Detective Hashem. What's wrong? Have I done something? Stephen. Here's Janelle. She's dead. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Janelle dead? How? She was murdered. Get the kid a drink of water, quick. Yes, yes. It's all right, Stephen. It's all right. I'm sorry. Mr Pryor, we're very sorry to bring you this news. As soon as you're able to, we'd like you to come down to the station and... He can't go anywhere like this. We need to take a formal statement from your son, Mr Pryor. He was out with Miss Watts last night. It's all right, Dad. I want to help as much as I can. We were going to the dance at the community hall. We didn't get there. Why not? Uh, I had a migraine coming on. It was getting worse while we were driving, so I asked her to stop for some fresh air. Where, where was that? Um, oh, I'm not sure. Um, a road near the hall in, in town. I, I was feeling really sick and I couldn't shake it. So she offered to drive me home. And? And that's what we did. She was disappointed, but... What time did she drop you home? We couldn't have been gone more than an hour. Must have been about 8.40ish. Stephen, how long have... You and Janelle been going out? About two months. It's a good relationship? Yes, yeah, very good. How's the sex? What? You, you can't ask me that. C can you ask me that? Just answer the question if you wouldn't mind. It's none of your business. What's to hide? What? what was the sex a little unusual, was it? Unusual? I, I don't understand. Oh, I mean, you know, was it straight up? You back passage man. No. That's disgusting. If you must know, we weren't having sex at all. We decided to wait. Well, that's unusual. In this day and age? It's what we wanted. We wanted it to be special when it happened. What, well, you, you were both happy with this arrangement? Sure she wasn't getting it somewhere else, Steve? No. And you were jealous? She wasn't yeah. seeing anyone else. We loved each other. Yes, it was, um, 8.45. He gets them a lot, migraines. He's sometimes in bed for a couple of days with them. Not this time? No, but he was very sick. I had a headache myself, actually. Needle point, it's hard on the eyes. Did Stephen go straight to bed? Yes, he did. He didn't go back out? No, he couldn't have. Uh, he did get up later to get some aspirin and he woke me up because I'd fallen asleep in the chair sewing. Mrs Pryor, did you see Janelle when she dropped him back home? No. 
What was she like? She was a lovely girl. Very sweet. She was very nice. Sociable. You say Stephen woke you later. Was your husband not home, Mrs. Pryor? No, he was out. He does a lot of charity work, Rotary and so on. He's very active in the community, Robert. Keeps him busy most nights. So he can't confirm your account of the evening? No, I suppose he can't. Janelle was a childcare worker. She was well liked. Her parents split up when she was 12. Only child, her dad just doted on her. She lived at home? Yeah, by all accounts, she's a good Catholic girl. Uh, Stephen's only a second boyfriend. There was a first? Yeah, it finished two years ago when he joined the army. He's posted in East Timor. Is he still... Yeah, I checked. He's still overseas. So she'd been going out with Stephen Pryor for two months. Do we believe that she hadn't been seeing anyone else, or...? Everyone I spoke to was sure of that. Still could have gone back to the dance, met someone else? Well, it was a church dance. It doesn't seem like a likely place to pick up strangers. It's still worth talking to everyone who's there. See if Janelle went back. I'll do at the autopsy. Fancy a trip to Melbourne? Oh, no, I'll stay and help PJ cover the dance. Fine. Mail call. Kel, looks like your subscription to Playgirl's coming through. Oh, oh please, like. Something for Sue's. No matter for you. Let's see, Sergeant Jacobs, Sergeant Jacobs, Mr. Jacobs, and Mark. Sounds like private mail, Sarge. Give your regards to your mother, Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my promotion's come through. Senior Connie. Hey. Hi. Hey, good on you, sir. Congratulations. Yeah, you had it in you. And now you can boss me around. Hey, are you sure there's nothing for me? It looks like the rest of the CI. Why? Are you expecting something? No? To Senior Constable Susan Rayner. And Senior Constable Jones. Ah, uh, actually, <clears throat> Jonesy missed out, Chris. What? It'll be in the post. Oh, it's bound to be. Oh, this hasn't got anything to do with you and Tom, has it? No, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, Chris. It's actually got nothing to do with the boss. It's just something that happens on the fourth anniversary of the job. Except in your case, it didn't. It's just a couple of hooks. Who cares, right? So, are you coming over tonight? Ah, oh, yeah, tonight might be a little tricky. Why? Well, Jonesy's got in a stack of wrestling DVDs. Wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> well, there might be a little bit of wrestling at my place if you play cards, right? I've got some pretty serious moves I've been working on myself. Ah. Sounds painful, you know, in, in a good way. But I'm going to have to pass. Can't desert my maintenance hour of need. Of course not. What does the autopsy report say? It's only preliminary. But what? Well, she died of asphyxiation after she'd already lost a lot of blood from the stab wound to the neck. What about the other stab wounds? Rage, disorganised, no semen and no sign of vaginal penetration. Crime scene also pointed out the posing of the body. So we're looking at rage followed by a deliberate, careful arrangement of the victim. Yeah, one of the questions we have to ask ourselves now is, was she and the boyfriend really waiting for that special occasion or did he have trouble getting it up? So they try to have sex. He can't. She has a go at him. He flies into a rage and kills her. Could have gone that way, yeah. Henderson. What's your take on Stephen Pryor? Well, he's got to be looking good for it. Given that no one saw Janelle go back to the dance. Well, he was the last person to see her alive. Yeah, we should talk to him again. We've got another body. Same stab wounds. Posing. Crucifix. It makes sense of the posing. 
Look at her. Christ on the cross. So, you think this stick was meant to be a cross? Well, it seems a reasonable conclusion given the ritualistic posing of the bodies. You've made statements to the press, have you? Well, yeah. Seeking information. Same as the TV interview. Well, I hope you were as discreet with the papers as you were with the TV. I didn't release any details about the scene. No one knows about the stick. So there's no question of a copycat? This is looking like the work of a serial killer. Are we looking at Stephen Pryor? First person I checked was with his family or not. And there's no connection to the second victim. Forensics has been back through the photos and the uh, physical evidence from the first scene. There was another shorter stick in the picnic rug and a couple of pieces of twisted grass. So there was a cross there too, but it fell apart. Well, that's what it looks like, yeah. You could be right. We may be looking at a serial killer. What now? Well, we look for a common denominator. Well, neither of the victims are what you call good time girls. They're both quiet, nice. The second victim's name's Marinda May. She's also 24, only been in Mount Thomas a couple of weeks. Flats with two other girls. They say she hasn't got a current boyfriend. Mm, not that they know of. She keeps to herself. Quiet, unhappy maybe, seems troubled. Parents? Overseas, we're trying to contact her. She's an assistant at It's a Snip. Hairdressers? Yeah, she was working there late last night. Well, who's the last person to see her? Well, the owner of the place is Rick Wallace. He left the salon at eight. But Marinda was still there. Yeah, it's her job to tidy up. Is this Rick guy in the clean? He's been alibied. Oh, how close is the hairdressers to the underpass? A couple of hundred metres. Fax for you. I'll go through these credit records and see if I can find any matches with the first victim. Let's get moving on this, eh, before another body turns up. Well, Rainer, congratulations on the book. Oh, it's no big deal. Just turn up in the mail. Well, in your case, they deserve. Jones, I've just been through that brief. Yeah? Do it again. This time use the spell checker. Hello, Mount Thomas Police. Yes, it's how can I help you? Hey. Mm -hmm. All right. When you picked up the mail oh, yesterday from the postie, yeah. did you get it yourself or it was, was there someone else here? No, it was just me. Uh, will it survive? Right. Except for the boss. And he was the one who handed it to me. Okay, what's your address? Why do you ask? No reason. All right, we'll get someone down there as soon as we can. Thanks, bye. Sarge, got an animal cruelty complaint. Right, deal with it, will you? He's been set alight. What kind of bastard would do something like that? Is he going to be all right? Well, apart from the burns and the hair loss, he's in shock. And he could well lose the use of his right eye. Oh, little scrap, look at you. A good Samaritan found him wandering. Or well, is he microchipped? Maybe we could track down the owner. Oh, I know who owns him. This is Trevor. He's been in before. <laughs> A dog named Trevor. That's right. Oh, that's a nice name. <laughs> the owners are a family called the Siebels. You don't think they could have done this? Oh, no, no, not the parents. But well, I probably shouldn't say this. Well, no, if you know who's hurting this little fellow, it's important you tell us. Well, the little boy, Miles, is, well, quite strange. Out there. Well, you think he could have done this? I don't know. It's possible. Well, you did the right thing to call us. You know, there's a link between abuse of animals by kids and later violent behaviour. You mean like the killer who's out there now? We'll be investigating any link. You don't think that Miles... Oh, no, 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 no. Almost certainly not, no. No, you've got me a bit spooked. No, 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 don't be silly. Seriously, you've got nothing to worry about, all right? Good. And if you need to talk to us, we're just a phone call away. <clears throat> we'll be investigating any link. Well, we will. Right, so an 11-year-old boy is a serial killer. I didn't say that. I said he could become one. Oh, very smooth pick-up technique. What are you talking about? I was actually concerned about that animal. Didn't you see the poor little thing shaking? No, but I saw you drooling. What? I was not. Yes, you were. I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Check out the carnage. Kids are psycho. Yes, that's what I bloody well call it. The kid needs taking in hand. Excuse it's us. It's not worth buying him anything. Doesn't mean to break things. He just gets hyper. Yeah, hyper's bloody right. Constables O'Rourke and Peroni, we're looking for your son Miles. He's out looking for his dog. It's run away. Yeah, we know, and we know where it is. Where? Well, that's what we've come about. So if you could bring Miles down to the station as soon as he gets home, that'd be great. Is there a problem? 
What's the problem? As soon as you can, thank you, sir. You're kidding. Just because the guy has a temper, if I'd have destroyed my toys like that, I'd have got thumped too. All I'm saying is that we should at least check it out with CI. Check what out? <sighs> well, we were investigating this case of cruelty against an animal. Uh, you were investigating the vet? Ex excuse me, do you mind? Anyway, during the course of this investigation, we came across a family that seems to have a few problems. And you're telling me this why? I'm getting there. The dad, this Greg Siebel, very aggressive kind of guy, and his son is setting fire to the family pet and doing all sorts of other weird stuff. You don't think you're getting carried away? I just thought he'd be worth looking into. You got his details? Yeah. And I'll check him out. How do you feel if we didn't? This guy turned out to be the killer. Thanks, Constable. Hey, boss. We're in the May's parents on their way back from Hong Kong as soon as they can get a flight. Be nice to be able to tell them we were close to catching a killer. Yeah, well, we've checked out the flat. Nothing. Why don't I wait at the salon now? I've compared Marinda's credit card statements with Janelle's and they both made recent payments to the one business. Care for a massage? Melinda. Marinda, May. And Janelle Watts. Sorry, no, no names aren't my strong suit, but a bum I can recognise at the drop of a towel. <laughs> Mr. McCready, this is a police investigation, not a night at the comedy store. We're not interested in wisecracks. Cracks. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's finish the stand-up sitting down. We believe these two women were customers of yours. Hey, what is this? Two dead women, Colin. Marinda May and Janelle Watts, were they customers? I don't know. Maybe. What's the matter? You all out of jokes? I'm sorry. I, okay, I was nervous and I make jokes You've got something to be nervous about, no. Colin? Look, people get nervous with the police, don't they? Don't say why. So why don't you overcome your nerves and tell us where you were the last two nights? Um, I usually work nights. I didn't the last two. That's a shame. I had a bad back. I needed to rest. Did you get a massage? So, can anyone confirm that you were home? Wife, girlfriend, boyfriend? None of the above. I mean, no. I live by myself. I was watching TV. Another shame you got no alibi. You said earlier you didn't recognise the names. Look, it's a business. It's hard to remember every customer. Where's your appointment book? At least it keeps the records. Both victims are in there. Uh, how long ago? My entries match with credit card payments. Janelle had a back and neck under a month ago. Marinda had the works ten days ago. The works. Colin's got a short memory. McCready, MC or MAC? MC. I'll check it out on leap. No, it's all right, Amy. I've already done that. According to his diplomas, he's a qualified nurse. I'll get on to it. In the meantime, we've got no proof of anything. This is all we've got. We have no choice but to let him walk. Here we go. Someone we can talk to. I went to see him when I broke my leg. Well, how'd you find him? He's not in the book. No, he just came in one day. He wanted to leave some flies on the bar for a medial massage. He seemed all right. Well, I suppose he has a certain rough charm. You weren't happy with your treatment? Well, he did want me to completely strip off just to have my leg massage. <laughs> and you refused? Yeah, of course. And he pushed the point, so I just left. I went to see a bloke in St David's instead. You couldn't have misinterpreted his intentions? Nah, it's a sleaze. We've got the same story from three other customers. And both the victims had appointments? Yep. Well, that's good enough for me. We can't charge him on that. Grill him again, break him, then charge him. We had to let him go. We had nothing on him. Except both the victims were clients. I want him brought back in. With respect, this is my investigation. And with respect, this is my station, my town. We've got two murders, a sexual predator out there, and you've let the prime suspect walk. I want McCready brought back in now. Sign's gone. Come on, Colin. Oi! Don't stuff us around. Don't waste your breath. He's long gone. Oh, shit. Well, look, I've been doing some checks into his background. Apparently, he dropped out of nursing college in Queensland. He left there in a hurry, too, after some allegations of improper behaviour. Was he charged? No. So it wouldn't have turned up in any of our checks? Just had a call from Evan and Susie. They found McCready's vehicle by the side of the highway. Any sign of him? No, no, it looks like he's just broken down on the way to Melbourne. Which means he's still in town. Find him. Can I help you? I was wondering if there was any news about Janelle. 
Oh, um, Mr Pryor, is it? Hmm. Yeah, no, I'm afraid not, no. Uh, I've had a lot of calls from the public. There's a lot to go through. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, it's just oh, I feel so helpless, you know? Look, mate, I reckon you should go home, eh? Get a bit of rest, be patient. Sarge? Excuse uh, me, Mr Pryor. Jonesy's on two local. He just wanted to know if you want McCready's vehicle towed to the depot or kept yep. in situ. Towed, yeah, no, I'll, um... I'll look after it. Uh, we'll get back to you if we hear anything, OK? Uh, Detective Fox will look after you. Thanks, Amy. Uh, how you holding up, Mr Pryor? Um, not too good. Just started to hit me, you know? Um, you know, you should really think about getting some grief counselling in the next couple of days. Talk it out. I mean, that stuff can really help. Yes, I'll do that, thanks. Are you driving? Do you need a taxi or something? No, no, I'll walk. Get some fresh air. Thank you. Hi. We're here to see Constable O'Rourke. You must be Miles. Where's that dog? Miles? Don't be rude. Trevor's at the vets. He's going to be all right, but he's pretty badly hurt. Right. You knew he'd been injured? No, I just thought he was lost. Tell the truth, Miles. You said Trevor got hurt and ran away. Your hearing must be going. Miles. It's not what I said. Don't talk to me like that. So what? What are you going to do about it? Oh, hey, hey! hey. Oh. Let him go. Okay. My arm. Oh, come on. I didn't hurt you. Not a baby? He's not a baby. You can't keep treating him like this. It makes things worse. Okay. Hey, Miles. Have a look at your arm, mate. I'm OK, Neil. Let's just have a look, eh? Greg! I only grabbed him. Broken. He's at the hospital having it set right now. I want to talk to him when he gets out. Should we call DHS, get a caseworker in? Well, once you inform DHS, it becomes an official investigation for them too. Are you sure you want that? Well, there's definitely something going on. There's a lot of aggro between that kid and his old man. You know, boss, there's a theory that Look, says... if you're sure, proceed. Ah, check out your Greg Siebel. No link to either of the victims. Better luck next time, Sherlock. still think there's something going on with that family. I know you think I'm nuts, but... No, no, I think you might be right. Huh? I said, I think you're right. I think we should talk to the parents separately. I should have stayed at the hospital with him. Senior Constable Rayne will bring him back as soon as they're done. Have you been having problems with Miles? Nothing out of the normal. He's 11. He's a bit of a dreamer. He lives in an imaginary world half the time. But I just... Oh. He can be difficult. Has been. Ever since his father left. What, Greg's not the father? It's his stepdad. Two years. He's good to Miles. Honest. I'm sure he wouldn't hurt him. Why do you say that? Because that's what this is about, isn't it? Look, Greg loves Miles. He was the one who brought in the dog to help him adjust. Greg's a good man. I do my best. It's hard when you're not their real father. Things have been getting difficult. But I've never hurt the kid. What you were saying before about discipline, what was all that about? Benice spoiled him rotten after his dad left. Understandable, I guess. But that's why I take a firm hand. For his sake. A smack on the bum every once in a while isn't exactly child abuse, is it? But a broken arm is. I didn't do that. But you've got a bit of a temper, haven't you? <laughs> no point denying that. I guess Miles provokes you every now and then. Not to the point where I'd break his arm. You didn't like the fact that he was smashing up his toys, did you? He has to learn to appreciate things. Right, like the dog you gave him. Did he deliberately hurt that dog? Were you teaching him a lesson? He wouldn't hurt Trevor. He loves that dog. He said Trevor's got hurt and run away. He was really upset. Come on, Miles. You told your stepdad Trevor got hurt, so you must know how it happened. I don't. Is he a good dog? Of course. And your dad bought him for you, didn't he? Stepdad. Right. Well, that was a pretty nice thing to do, eh? How do you get on with your stepdad, Miles? He's all right. Do you fight? 
Mm. A bit. And what happens when you fight? Nothing. He just gets loud, goes on and on. My dad used to get loud too, you know. He used to give me a whack on the bum every now and then. Does Greg do that? Sometimes. Hard? Yeah, it kills. So what happened to your arm, mate? Did Greg do that too? No. You don't have to protect him. I'm not. Greg's OK. All right. So what happened to your arm? It was an accident. What sort of accident? I want to see Trevor. I'll get onto the HS, see if there's a history of abuse. Yeah, maybe another angle is to check with CFA and see if they put out any fires. It could have injured a dog. That's a really good idea. All right, I'll check it out with the vet again. You mean check out the vet again? Shut up, you suggested the fire angle, not me. OK, Romeo, but we'll both go. Someone needs to keep you on a leash. Is there anything else you can tell us about the burns? Can you tell if he was doused in petrol or something? Oh, he wasn't. The burns would be deeper and more extensive. It's more like he was thrown into a fire, something like that. Oh, OK. Oh, thanks, that's very helpful. I'll need to know how it turns out, so that I can place the dog somewhere if I have to. I'll be in touch. <laughs> Cute. He is, isn't he? I've always liked animals. They seem to like me too. Are you okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, all right, all right. We'll we'll keep in touch. Thank you. And your tetanus shot. Very funny. Rabies. Well, I looked into Colin McCready's background in Queensland, and apparently he had a habit of looking in ladies' bedroom windows. He also stalked a female client. But she wouldn't proceed with charges. Mm, so he walked. McCready had his training wheels on in Queensland. Now that he's come down here to Victoria, he's graduated to murder. And we let him go. I think we've got the point. Um, just had a call out to someone breaking into a house. We're in the middle of something here, Sergeant. Yeah, PJ, you yeah, might be interested in the address. Take the front or the back. Oh, I'll pull the chain, you catch the turd. Hey, Colin! Come on, mate, don't make it difficult. What's on the run? Why did you take off, Colin? Why do you think? You've got a colourful history. Imagine our surprise. I never touched that girl in cans. Well, that's not what she said. It was consensual. Oh, that's a big word for you. Lawyer teach you that? You can't bring that up. There were no charges. You want to tell us the truth about where you were the last two nights? I told you I was watching television. No one can confirm. I was watching videos. You can check with the video place. Oh, crap! Where were you, Colin? I was at home. I seen you, Detective Fox. Let's explain the procedure to Mr McCready, huh? Sure. We need to verify your identity by comparing prints. You're going to be sitting here for a while, so if you want to help yourself, there are a couple of things you can do. Like what? Like prints for comparison. We also want to take a sample of your DNA. No. Look, we can get a court order, but it's just easier for everybody if you consent. Well, you can get stuffed. All of you. I'm not giving you any DNA. I'm not giving you anything. Well, we brought McCready back in for more questions, but we're going to run into the same old problem. We can't hold him for much longer. No evidence is no evidence. How long have we got? Not long enough for a court order to get his DNA. We need something we can go to a magistrate with. How about evidence of McCready's inappropriate behaviour with one or both of his victims? A uh, masseur. Um, yes, yeah, she, she did mention it. Would you know why? Was it, what, remedial relaxation? What? Well, she had back pain. She fell off a horse when she was a kid. It bothered her sometimes. Did Janelle ever mention if she was touched inappropriately by this bloke? No. No, she never did. Is this man a suspect? I need that running sheet. Come on, constable. Chop, chop. Don't keep your superiors waiting. Don't listen to him. He'll get your hooks. Yeah, who cares what the boss said? 
So the boss did say something? No. Paranoid. It's not just me. Everyone's saying so. Hey, where have you two been? It can't have taken that long at the vets. We had an injury. What happened? Constable Fearless here got bitten by a little bunny rabbit. Oh, so little, thank you. <laughs> so we had to take him down to the hospital so he could get a shot. Aww. Peroni. What? You're an idiot. See if I uh, came through. Hey, pay dirt. They put out a fire this morning and guess where? So, what are we looking for? Dog hair? Just some idea of how the fire started. Since when are you the fire investigator? Hey, Miles! Oh, no, come on, let's not do the chase thing. So how did the fire happen, mate? Don't know what you mean. Come down here to get away? Have some time to yourself? Maybe. What's wrong with that? Come on, Miles. What did you do? Burn down the shack for a bit of fun? Go buy a smoke? I don't smoke. No, neither do I. Just wondering where these butts came from. How would I know? So were you smoking in the shack? You told the truth when you said what happened was an accident, didn't you? What happened, mate? I was just mucking around. I flicked one of those matches and the fire started. But just a little one, then it kept on burning. So what did you do? I pushed the door down and he ran off. He was all smoky and stuff. And then I tripped over this dog trying to catch him. That's how you hurt your arm. So why didn't you tell someone? Your mum or your stepdad? And what was I supposed to tell him what I was doing down here? You know what he's like. Miles may have been smoking. We'll talk about that at home. But in the course of your investigation, I have been accused of child abuse. That was an honest mistake. Well, I think an apology might be the go, don't you? I'm really... No, honest. Mr. Siebel, this is your fault. In future, control your stepson. Is that all? Thanks, boss. Don't ever, either of you, apologise for doing your job. Jones! Thanks for that. Find it? No. Can I help you two with anything? How is he? He's still very sore. But I thought I'd drop him over at the Siebel's on my way home, if that's okay. Oh, I think Miles would appreciate that. Deborah, hey. How's the finger? Oh, it's all right. I think it'll stop me holding a nice glass of red wine. <laughs> I'm a white wine girl myself. Yeah? My fiancé likes red, though. <laughs> That's good. He's got good taste. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Shut up. Yeah, but that doesn't give you the right to go rooting about in his desk. Yes, yeah, Sarge. But if you'd had a problem, you could have come to me. Well, I know who I should talk to. Should have done it in the first place. Evan, don't. Hey, Jonesy, don't do anything rash. I want to know why you're trying to sabotage my promotion. I'm sorry? If you've got a problem with my work, the least you can do is tell me to Who my face. said I had a problem with your work? Well, I just thought... You just thought what? When my promotion didn't come through, I thought that you had something to do. As far as I know, your promotion should have come through at the same time as Rainer's. It'll be a cock-up of some kind. Blame HQ. All right. Is that all? Yeah, just about covers it. We'll close the door. You bastard. What? Where is it? 
There's one. Where is it? I, take it I, easy, Tiger. Hand it over. OK, OK. Just let go. What is going on, you two? Well, that is a very low act. Yeah, but it was bloody funny. Right, now you die. Hey, it was a joke. Where's your sense of humour? Hey, are you two? Now, look here. What the hell is going on? Uh, Jonesy and I are just reliving our childhood, boss. Well, find a playground to do it. Believe it or not, this is a police station. Did you get a court order to get that DNA sample? Sorry, they wouldn't give it to us. We have to cut McCready loose. Not as far as I'm concerned. This is the right man. You just haven't asked the right questions. Didn't do yourself any favours taking off, you know that? I guess. So, you run away. You have no alibi. You have a history of offences against women. You know both the victims. Things aren't looking too good for you, are they? I, I told you that... Don't look at Senior Detective Hashem. Look at me. Look me in the eye and tell me you didn't murder those women. Boss. Not now. You should hear I you said boss, not. It's important. What do you think you're doing? I'm really sorry, but McCready is an accurate. Garth just called. They found another body. I reckon the body's been here for about four hours. Well, that lets McCready off the hook. Looks like the pattern's been continued. Stab wounds. Body's been laid out. Cross. All except one thing. Marathon man found her, almost tripped over, he said. Better keep the vultures away from him. Didn't take them long. Where were you? Just got the message. There's no sign of Alex. He's, uh, he's on his way, I just passed him at the turn off. Stab wounds are pretty haphazard. Carotid artery was the clincher by the looks. Yeah. Suffocated before she bled out. Courtesy of her undies stuffed halfway down her throat. What is that? Oh, for God's sake. I think the stick was inserted before or after she died. Either way, this is one sick puppy. Mm -hmm. line dancing required. Yeah, the first light. In the meantime, nobody's to contaminate the scene. I suppose we should uh, cover the road leading down here and the ground by the drop-off too. Yeah, you might need some more people. Oh, St David's is sending in some more uniforms. Where are you getting bolshy, are they? Well, they don't need to know the creepy details. It could create a panic. She wants to talk to the detective in charge. That'd be you. Thanks very much. Oh, you might want to get on to Amy. See if she's had any luck chasing down similar MOs. This... Sticking might be a signature. What's up? Camera shot. It is homicide. It is good. Well, that's all I can tell you at the moment. 
Was this a sexual assault, Detective Henderson? Uh, that's not something I can discuss at this point. We'll need a post-mortem to determine the physical details. So what can you tell us? Well, not a great deal at this stage, I'm afraid. We have a young woman, looks to be in her early to mid-twenties, deceased, clearly in violent circumstances. How was she killed? I can't discuss that. We do know but... it happened sometime during the night. We'd be grateful if anyone who did see anything... Oh, you come up well. Let's just hope like this flushes out some new information. Any ideas as to motive? Well, the stick's a pretty clear indication that it's a sexual assault. Any similars on Lee? No exact matches. Couple of vaginal violations. Hang on, what? This wasn't vaginal? Different orifice. Right. Anything else at the scene? Uh, all we came up with was some tyre prints. It might be useful. Anything on the body? Yeah, well, they reckon she was killed on the spot. She wasn't dumped. No ID? Zilch so far, but they're extending the search. Public's the best bet for identification. I gave out the Crime Stoppers number. Oh, great. Our phones will be running hot with cranks and nut cases. Yes, and you'll note down every one and refer them back for analysis, clear? See? Now, Thomas Police. No, we don't hand out rewards for that kind of information. Yeah, yeah, well, we call it community spirit, okay? Might have a hot.